So Instagram, like every network, can be used uh, as a person or as a business. So you had the experience last time of using it as a person, perhaps, in creating the account and kind of looking at the interface. And you will see that even though it's very much more visually or photo-based and such, it's still like every other social network in terms of you can use it as a promotional tool. And we'll cover some of the ways to do that. So this is reiterating concepts that uh, we've covered before, but we will see that they happen on several networks. So tips for uh, using Instagram uh, as a business. Use hashtags to categorize your posts. <coughs> One to three hashtags per post is good. More than five is spammy. However, you can add up to 30. So the hashtags are keywords that are like the topic of your post, as I've said. But they're also active links, and I'll show the example in a moment. And um, I want to get found when I create Instagram or any account. No one knows I exist. So I need to do the various tactics to make people aware I exist. And one of them is to tag my posts with keywords of what people might be searching for. Well, uh, one to three is good. You go more than five, you look like a spammer because spammers are trying to reach as many people as possible to, to sell their uh, genuine, authentic Rolex watches. And so they're going to put hashtag watch, hash, hashtag affordable, hashtag Rolex, hashtag genuine, hashtag buy now, hashtag uh, you know, low cost shipping, whatever. They're going to put all of these keywords of what people might be searching for uh, on Instagram. But the problem is that Instagram now, it's probably around five years old, six years old or so. So therefore, the network has had to evolve. Back in the days when all of these social networks were really much more about people and things were a little bit more naive, well, it doesn't quite work anymore because now the spammers have flooded all of these networks and they're trying to sell their, uh, you know, their, their, their cheap pills and all of that. So they're going to try to use all these techniques that we're talking about, but really exceed them and it works because in real life just like if someone calls you on the phone and tricks you to give you your credit card well that's not gonna happen to you but you probably heard someone that did happen too so in real life it you know spammers are have been in real life and they're here on the web and it does work enough of a degree that they keep doing it if none of this were profitable there wouldn't be any spam so the thing is also I'll say it like this, most social networks operate under the doctrine guilty until proven innocent. So if you seem to be using spam techniques, or are flagged or reported as a spammer they will shut you down and it's hard to get reinstated with so many bad accounts so many fake spam bots and all of that it's just easier more cost-effective for the company to have false positives than to err on the side of caution. So I have been using Instagram for a while and I've done it the right way, but maybe uh, on these last few posts, these last five posts, I decided to kind of try to reach more people. So I'm gonna put you know, 20 hashtags on my posts. And yeah, I'm getting more visitors, more views, more whatever. But then the automated system sees a marker of having too many quote, too many hashtags is, it's a spam, this might be a spam, we're going to shut them down, we're going to limit them, we're going to do something. 
and then good luck trying to find a real customer service representative to help you and for you to explain I'm not a spammer I'm just trying to get more people so guilty until proven innocent so basically don't go overboard don't do the techniques that the spammers do because the network will either automatically label you as a spammer or perhaps one of their real moderators will and then it's going to be hard to to argue with them for example over on YouTube I uh, I like using YouTube uh, for business and personal mostly personal and I upload various videos on my hobbies and I, I did a video uh, a, like a retrospective on an independent music artist I talked about the different uh, the different albums he had put out and my favorite song for each one and I put a sound clip of like 10 seconds for all of the sounds um, the video got a lot of views and then at a certain point uh, it was deactivated and I got a message saying you seem to be violating the terms of service on YouTube here uh, click here to try to um, challenge the claim so I went through their process and then uh, I got eventually like a person to answer and I and I said okay what exactly am I violating and it says well here if you look at our terms of service you know you need to follow our terms of service I said what exactly did I violate they were never able to tell me exactly what I violated so what I did was I, I looked at those terms and I did exactly what it said where it said something about your thumbnail needs to be like this and your title like this so I completely changed it based on their particular criteria and then I s submitted it to the customer service person and they still they said well sorry once the once the thing is flagged we have no way to unflag it like of course you do but you're gonna you know penalize people um, arbitrarily and not let them climb out of the hole that you've put them in so uh, no big deal it was like one of the many videos I had but it does happen it does happen that guilty until proven innocent even if you argue with one or three different people on the company they've got to hold back this deluge of spam that it's like better to have a false positive than than let any of the spam through so you're gonna use hashtags as a business and I'll show how in a moment uh, but you want to stay safe and not use too many the tip is you can research hashtags to try to figure out good ones that apply to you. And that brings us to the next point here. Use the Explore tab to research hashtags, topics, and ideas for your posts. The example is Search for a keyword and see results to form your own strategy. And that should sound familiar because we've done that on the several networks we've already talked about. And it comes back again on Instagram. I'll just show you what it looks like on Instagram, however. So I'm trying to think like of a real world analogy but in here in the digital world I'm sort of like in a sense jumping on the bandwagon in that I'm looking at what is popular what do people like how can I incorporate that myself but within reason and within the message of my own business Be careful it's not just a blind band wagon jumping You use this technique as a starting point <coughs> for your own content. So if I have Victor's Bakery, I'm trying to sell cookies and cupcakes, birthday cakes, etc. And I'll use that as the example in a moment. But I want people to see my cookies and cupcakes and all of that. So. I'm going to use the Instagram Explorer uh, screen to look for those keywords cookies, birthday cake, etc. And then I'm going to see those results and use those results to help me. 
like this. So I'm going to use Instagram as a mobile simulator here. The little magnifying glass. Down at the bottom here is the is the explore window. It does look a, a little different than the one on the device. On the device, it, it, there's much more there's much more um, multimedia and movement and, and and stuff on the screen and deeper ways to search. But it has the general idea. What I'm seeing here from this screen are some popular um, Instagram posts that people are sharing right now. And so, kind of browsing around, there's some things about food. There's various vistas, artistic things in black and white. Even without going into detail by clicking any of these, I might see ideas and topics that I could use as a way for me to make my own posts. So recently, some popular things seem to be, I guess, graffiti. Is there any way that I can make some sort of post that is like graffiti-esque? If people are looking at that at the moment, that's popular at the moment, can I incorporate graffiti style into my post, perhaps? Oftentimes, no, but let's see what else. There's some photos of food. Without clicking on it, you know, that photo of that, of that big burger right there, is a close-up. Here's one of a of pizza shot from above. So the idea here is if your product, especially if it's food related, close-ups of the product are going to be a lot better than something far away. Let's see more examples of food and cats. Cats always work. So if you can put a cat into your photo, that'll help. <laughs> okay, so let's see just this photo here. So there's some... Um, okay, so food is life. CDO is the account here posted a photo. It's a close-up of the food. It's at a lower angle. On a technical level, it's not an amazing photo. Looks tasty. Um, we have 14 likes so far. They've got their text. And then here's their hashtags. And they're kind of getting a little too many hashtags. But they have foodie, hashtag foodie, hashtag mouthwatering. Hashtag food, etc. And they seem to be some sort of restaurant, so they're showing off their food photo. They have 14 likes so far. They have someone that that is commenting right here, Grizzled Nomad commented, this is a good picture, but I don't know if it is because of good lighting or place, maybe composition. So they, they like the photo. That's good. When you identify people that are active, that's an example of an account that then you can click to, to view them, to follow them, to further interact with them. They may be a future customer. So when, when you find a user, Posting about a hashtag, a topic of your business, you should interact with them to get their attention. No one knows you exist, so when you con contact or communicate with people on any of these networks, they at least know you exist. And if your content is good or interesting or of what they like, then you could get a result. When you find that user, you should interact with them to get their attention. They may like, comment, reshare, follow your account. 
follows are the most valuable in this list here, but even a like is valuable because that identifies that someone is likes your content, is, is perhaps active, and then you can further interact with them. All these actions have a value. Okay, I'm going to go back. This time, instead of kind of seeing whatever is there, I've got this search button or search box. So I'm going to search hashtag cookie. When I search, it pops up suggestions. <laughs> it pops up suggestions and some numbers. People that used cookies, plural, 14 or 16 million photos. Cookie singular, 5 million. So which would you say, for Victor's Bakery, what's your opinion? Is cookies or cookie more valuable for me as Victor's Bakery to use as a hashtag? Anyone have an opinion? Cookies or cookie? Let's do this. Who raise, raise, the more the merrier, the more the better. Maybe uh, let's do this. Raise your hand if you think cookies plural is a better hashtag for me to use. Okay. Raise your hand if you think cookie is a better hashtag for me to use. Uh, it seems to be kind of split, but maybe more toward cookie. You're you're all right and you're all wrong. <laughs> That's because it is on a case by case basis. Just by looking at the numbers. Okay, sixteen million versus five million. In theory, more people seem to be looking at cookies than cookie. So if I use cookies, I have that inherent, more people are going to see me, probably. However, the opposite of that, the downside of that, is that I might get lost in the crowd with 16 million. So either one might be a right choice. Uh, I'll try that one moment. I'll try that one moment. Let me finish my thought here. What I would do is both. That's allowed. I can do cookies and cookie. Then that way I'm going to hit the people that are looking for cookies, which is more. And then the people that are looking for cookie, which is less, but might be more, um, more effective because less people are looking at it. So I can do both. Remember, I'm saying one to three. You can do four or five, but more than five looks like spam. I recommend one to three. So I might do for my post I'm about to make cookies and cookie. That would be fine. As for then getting more specific, like cookies or cookie SD. Let me see. I have cookies decorate decorados. I have cookies design. So I'm not seeing cookie SD all by itself, which may be very small. And these, this is often displayed in chronological, un, in, in order of popularity. I'm already reaching down to only 492. If I go further, 436, 373. Cookies dog. Cookies Disney. <laughs> So the one, the one thing that I just kind of had to comment is that on some of these, you have to be really careful what it is that you're posting and who you're associating yourself with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody knows I've got shark fins and dogs and whatever. And there's a post on there. There, there is a, uh, a hashtag where it has fake pictures of dogs being used as bait for sharks. Mm -hmm. And they have, yeah, they have big fish hooks through dogs' heads, and it's really mm -hmm. horrible. And, you know, you look at it, and you know I'm associating sharks and dogs, and you think, oh, dog, shark, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You find all these horrible pictures. So mm -hmm. you should be aware that you know if your subject could go that way, you should be looking at these hashtags before you decide to publish them. That's the point of this. Then reiterating it here that we're using this. 
we wouldn't really willy-nilly put in a hashtag. It is a good idea to do the research. Just, yeah, just, just click on it when it comes up and scan through five or six hundred posts and see whether or not you're in the right place. Or so advice, uh, research your hash. Kind of weird stuff you're going to get on you know, food and... You know. Now that uh, that also, this is one of the big downsides of these networks that they're trying to keep back the spammers and the bad stuff like that, and a lot of it is automated, and they don't have enough like real people to look at this stuff. But uh, I would say, uh, as often as possible, for us to be a good citizen, we can report those things too, even though that stuff might appear. There is a button on everything here to say report this content, and if enough people do that. I have faith that something will be done about it. Now there may be, uh, there are some hashtags like definitely like with nudity and all of that. Those hashtags are shut down so fast. So unfortunately, sometimes these other ones uh, regarding violence and such are not as fast. But I would say, uh, yeah, when you see negative stuff, report it because uh, that ultimately is also hurting the company because these companies are trying to sell ads and, and all of that and they don't want to be associated with negative things their investors definitely don't so uh, we can do that too but saying here research your hashtags just in case it's not what you think and you don't want to be associated with negativity also report negativity or bad things which may help your um, hashtag. Maybe, um, maybe these networks, you know, need to get these. These networks have grown so fast, but it's like customer service. These customer ser these companies in the real world, Coca Cola, you know, they they all of these real world products. Has anyone ever called any of these companies? You buy a can of Coke and it says here, if you're not completely satisfied, call this number. Has anyone called any of these numbers ever? Yeah. How did, how did that go? I, I, called, I had a bad can of spray paint. They sent me six free cans of paint. There you go. Yeah. 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 So, you know, next time you buy, you buy that bag of Doritos, there's a phone number that says, if you're not completely satisfied, and so many of them are funny because it says, return the unused portion for a, for a, uh, a refund or a replacement. So, yeah, eat that bag of chips halfway and then return it and uh, I'm not saying to defraud them but they are uh, definitely much more customer savvy in the real world and then this digital stuff so many millions of users so much stuff being posted every second they really need to, these companies need to invest in like real world moderators and Facebook has thousands of them I don't know maybe even millions but they have thousands of people moderating this stuff and I've read like exposés and news stories about like Facebook moderators have to oftentimes go to therapy because they're looking at the worst things on the internet and dealing with it and then that's their job and then they need to also uh, have their mental health taken care of so um, it's that's the, the modern uh, anonymous nature of the internet and all of that so for us on the positive note uh, you want to search your hashtags research your hashtags to make sure you're using the ones that will be beneficial to you. So I haven't clicked on any of these at all, but um, if I go with uh, cookie jar, 142,000, so that's going to give me results here, and I can do some quick scans. And uh, cookie jar, uh, I guess it's really, I, I guess not. It, I guess this has to do with like a music group. This must be some musician, some K-pop musician. So could you go at Cookie Jar to see who is controlling that? Is there, is there somebody that, is there an at Cookie Jar that's that well, that's two different two different questions. Let me answer both. At is a hashtag which no one controls. No one controls a hashtag. Anyone can invent a hashtag. Anyone can use a hashtag. At is a mention of an account. So hashtag cookie 
is a keyword attached to all posts linked together. But at cookie is a lucky user that was fast enough in the beginning when this network was invented to grab that name. So, you know, my name would be something like, you know, at Victor Campos. That's my name on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. The at often signifies the u a user account, um, which is unique. Only one person in the world can, can use that per network. But the hashtag or pound sign cookie is a, is a hashtag uh, that no one really controls. You can research that. Uh, I believe you can research that. We'll confirm right here. If I up on search here, let's see what happens. At cookie. So it's popping up right here. With the at symbol, it's popping up with people's accounts or companies' accounts that use the word cookie, either in their name or their bio, their description. So cookie Soph is Sophie Cookson. Um, verified little green, a uh, little blue verified thing, meaning that's the Sophie Cookson, who, I don't know who that is, but that's her. Uh, cookies clothing, uh, cookie hijab, cookie money, cookie, cookie swirl. So I'll just click on this first one here. So she's got the word cookie in her name, plus Soph. And not much of a description. Those are some, I don't know what those are, roses or swords or something. And then she's got her, her link to her website. And she's got 127,000 followers. She's following 765. And these are the recent posts. So this person has the, has the word cookie in their, in their name. And um, that's, that's, that's the difference, that the hash that the hash symbol is a keyword. Anyone can use a hashtag. A hashtag could get co-opted to go to something negative. But an at symbol means an account. Let's see, cookie, cookies, FSF. So this is a business in the hate at San Francisco. They're a clothing store, so they've got their website up there, 341,000 followers, cookiessf.com. So two that are not cookie-related at all. And um, using the search box of Instagram allows you to do that research. Curiosity, let me search right here. Hashtag in SDCE Insta first post, seven posts. There you go. So if you were here last week, I guess, did anyone post these? So there's there's that. Seven posts. You guys invented a hashtag. There's no usage except what was used for it last week. So the point of that is, while anyone can create a hashtag, you probably don't want to. Anyone can invent a hashtag. You probably want to use an existing one. Because you have to do double duty. You have to, um, you have to uh, create visibility for your own account, and now you've got to create visibility for that hashtag. No one knows about the. No one knows about you. No one knows about your hashtag. So I see so many times that people. Uh, try to write articles that say, on your own business, remember to always hashtag your own business. Well, again, what's the point of that? They don't know your business exists. Why are they going to use your own hashtag? 
uh, it's a chicken or the egg sort of thing. Perhaps one day you'll be famous and your business will be really famous on Instagram or whatever. And yeah, then using that hashtag could be valuable to you. But in the beginning, when you're just trying to get off the ground, using a hashtag of your own business is kind of redundant and not that effective. No one knows you exist. And then what's the incentive for other people to use it besides yourself? So if you are famous, did you want to do hashtag get your compost? Yeah, you could do that to couple it with a promotion. So let's say we... So... Or you're up and coming. Yes. Let's say you do get some fame, however you define it. Uh, so you can use your vanity hashtag like this as a promotional tool promotional tool and a community building tool the example of that is let's say I'm an up-and-coming musician and I'm trying to get more people to buy my music so I'm going to search the usual hashtags and attach the usual hashtags like indie or you know rock, whatever. I'm going to put the hashtags of what people are going to be searching for. But I'm also going to be putting hashtag Vix Music. So in the beginning, that hashtag is only going to be myself. I'm the only one using it. But I can use it as a promotional tool in something like I could create posts and content saying you'll get a shout out in my next music video if you use the hashtag Vix Music. So if I can convince people to use my hashtag somehow that they'll get something, even something as, as fleeting internet fame, that might be enough to start to spread the message of my hashtag. So example, you have people use my hashtag and they get some reward. So I see this all the time, like in um, that there's a business, even like a real life business, that says, share a photo of our hamburger, hashtag it Victor's Hamburgers, and show us to get some, a free small fries next time. So it's costing me a free bag of fries for everyone that shows me. But everyone that wants a free bag of fries needs to make a photo with a photo of my food and my hashtag, and it could spread out further. Someone sees that photo, they like it, they, they reshare it, they like it, whatever, my hashtag goes a little further, friends of friends. And it kind of snowballs, it could snowball. So, can I can I add what? Oh, have people use? I I thought I wrote it. I thought I wrote it. I heard it in my head, but I thought I wrote it. Mm. Have people use my hashtag, and they get some reward. Um, have people take a photo of your product, hash tag it your tag, give them something. And that something is anything, because it could be like this, this sort of like shout out culture and this pat on the back culture is very prevalent in terms of people just love it like when you just even mention them if you put their name in your post or their their name in your picture or or you mention them in in in, in your video or, or whatever that that's that's fun it's like this fleeting internet fame you know people back in the day i guess still now they love to be on the news hey check it out tonight 6 p.m. i'm going to be on the news I, re I i i had something to say about that car crash well okay then 2 days later who cares well the same thing with uh, this internet fame, fame that uh, my own um, name was shared by someone a little bit more famous and for like two days people message me and comment me and all of that and then, then it's gone what's next but you use that to your advantage in terms of uh, you give something 
to potential followers. And yeah, maybe it never results in, that, in, in you selling anything. But possibly building followers, friends of friends. Again, the thing about the privacy of these networks, you, you probably notice it, especially on Facebook, when it says, well, Janet liked this post, and Bill visited here. These networks tell you so much about your connections with the connected person probably not even realizing how much is being shared. You might then see, oh, they went there? That's interesting. I want to go there. I want to do that. Best case scenario. Community building post is related to that as well. You know, you're doing the self-promotion about do this hashtag, you get something, I get more views. And community building is, is that also, which I've mentioned before, about balance, self-promotional content with community building. If your social social media accounts are always about sales and buy, etc. It will turn people off and they'll unfollow. So mix it up with posts that are not overtly <coughs> about sales, about selling, buying, about sales and buying. Just a fun photo, uh, that sunset, um, a cat, uh, a photo of the clouds or whatever, just something that is not always about selling something. Maybe on topic, like maybe with, um, maybe for Victor's Bakery, a photo of my, of my bakers in the, in the kitchen smiling and waving to the camera. That's it, putting a human face on it, everyone's happy to work there. I'm not saying click here to buy our next cookie, but I'm just community building, showing off our happy team, making Victor's Bakeries, uh, Victor's Cookies, and um, getting likes, and that sort of thing. So it doesn't always have to be about sales, some sort of balance. So, you know, how would that actually work if you had a bakery and, and you told somebody to get a free cookie? What, what are you doing? Are, you, are they going to come in and they're going to say, "Hey, here's my account. And here's where I here's where I tag you and where's my cookie." Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's they're they're going to have to come in and show you. Yes. So how do you apply that? Like, let's say you're an online customer, it says you get free shipping if you if you do whatever. I mean, how how is could you do it if you if you're an online uh, business? You can still do it if you're online because when the person creates the post. Let's say I'm going to go over here and I'm going to upload something. Let's say this is what this is the thing that I'm going to do. They, it's they're not going to come physically to my business to show this to me on their phone. The closest is that I'm going to say something like, um, uh, "Look at this amazing product from hashtag Victor's Bakery," or probably better at Victor's Bakery. So there is a Victor's Bakery on Instagram, right there. So if if I do the at, which is a connection to their account, this hashtag would be then a list of all pictures with that hashtag. But the, the at connects this post sort of directly to that account. So the way I would be promoting that with an online business is I would be stipulating, share your Share your photo, you'll get 10% off of your next sale, and don't forget to at mention us in your post, because there's no way I'm going to know unless I sit down to search my name. Right, that was my question. So, somebody places an order and says, uh, hey, you know, I'm supposed to get an extra cookie. Hmm. What what's, what's the proof? Now, do I have to go research everybody that... I have to go back to my site and research to find out if that person actually did that? No, that's too much. That's too I much. Mean, that's what I'm trying to figure out. How would, you, how would you verify it if you're an online business and you've offered, say, free shipping if they, if they tag you? That's the main idea. Yes, they have to tag you. They have to at mention you. They have to tag you. Not the hashtag because unless you've got... 
an app or a software monitoring your hashtag and alerting you of it, you're going to need to sit down and look up your own hashtag. If you at, if you have the person tag you that way with the at symbol, it should alert you on your phone or your device or your uh, computer up on the notifications button. Right. So, someone. so you'll have the proof there. Five days later, they place an order. Say, don't forget my free cookie. I'm going to have to go back to the history of my notifications to find out. You just trust them. You just honor it. No, no, I, I'm just saying. But that, I, no, I understand that it's a trust thing, but but that's what you would have. That's that's how the mechanics of it would work. Then. If yeah, it might be. The ads on. You're going to have to go back to your uh, notifications through the history mm -hmm. and try to figure out. You know, if that's the guy. Yeah, and, and it's even more complicated because they're going to place their order as John Smith. Sure. But then their at name is going to be Super Cool Guy 99. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, that, that's what I thought. And I, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I understand if you're just giving away something that you can. But yeah, it could be but, it could be complicated in that sense about well, who is that person claiming that they oh, actually probably did it. works better for brick and mortar than it does. Yeah, yeah, because it's anonymous and all of that. But yeah, you'd have to go back through your notifications. And depending about the fame of your business and all of that, you may have to scroll a little while, or if, if it's not the... Yeah. But then they do have a marketing team that they've hired to deal with that. So they do. The big companies also do things like that. They... Um, they do they, they do the using us as promotion for them by having us do their hashtags and stuff. So, uh, okay, one more thing here, then we'll take a break, and then after the break we'll look at some Snapchat. Um, this is one of the things I cannot really show you on the, the, the fake mobile interface uh, to create a story. Actually, what happens here? Story. Hmm, how does that work? I guess you can. Oh, that's cool. Not the video one. But let's define stories a little bit and then how they can be useful for you as a business. Regular Instagram posts are permanent. That is, you upload that photo and it's there forever until you delete it. Stories are self-destructing content or post. After 24 hours, what you've uploaded into your story goes away. So after 24 hours, content goes away. If it sounds familiar, it is because it was stolen, I mean borrowed, from Snapchat. When we get to Snapchat, one of the big one of the USPs of Snapchat is self-destructing content. What is USP again? Uh, selling unique selling proposition. What makes something unique compared to the competition? Snapchat was that whatever you're sharing is going to disappear within a certain amount of time. So in the beginning, Snapchat started off as this sort of like sneaky network where, hey kids, your parents are on Facebook. Come to our network where they're not, and whatever uh, naughty things you upload or embarrassing things disappear in 24 hours. That got popular enough that uh, a lot of other networks are borrowing it, specifically Instagram. So a story. You can also sort of think of it like this. A slideshow of content that plays automatically and can include uh, photos and video with filters, etc. That then disappears in 24 hours. It creates an effective sense of urgency. If I put a post, a regular post on Instagram, I can go back and look at it whenever. I've subscribed to you, I'll look at it when I have time. Things that I put into the stories, if you didn't see it today, it's gone tomorrow. 
So I gotta go check out your story. There's something new. And it alerts you right here. Uh, it's very subtle. But this one that has this little colored symbol around it, or the little outline around it, it means they've got they've got a story right now that I need to see before 24 hours. My account right here without the little glow around it doesn't have a story. But Eric right here has a story. No, it's the it's that circular multicolored thing. Let me go back to it. See, see how it went away? It was, a, it was like red and yellow. It was a bunch of like colors, but that line around the circle, it, it went away now because I've seen it. And let me play it again. He had here a video on the elliptical. So he's on the elliptical. And at the top, there's a little bar here that's showing the progress of this video. He might be saying something, have the volume off. This is the first slide of his story. Then it goes to the next slide showing off his preferred energy or protein drink. So then that, that, that ends. Now I can skip it to the next one. I can go back to the previous one. So I can control it back and forth. Uh, you can click to pause it also. You can tap to pause it. I really want to read the details of it. So a story is a slideshow that disappears in 24 hours and it can include video or photos. It can also include a bunch of other fun things like drawings on it and stickers of happy faces or filters of like wearing uh, glasses and like it's a really fun sort of thing. Doesn't the story feature notify your followers that there's a story happening? I've been noticing... I've been noticing it more that, yeah, Instagram does a pop-up once in a while that says, yeah. John has shared something recently, or Janet hasn't posted in a while, check it out. So that's the network. The networks nowadays kind of also uh, remind you or bug you that stuff is happening. And in the interface, it's one of the first things there. As soon as I log into Instagram and I, and I get into my account, the first thing there is this whole little area of stories. So it's kind of like really front and center. Usage for business. Well, one more thing. So uh, can be static photos videos can have filters stickers text drawings so you can further work you can add location you can go pull there's lots of questions yeah there's many questions were just added recently polls questions locations i think they even do like temperature and things like that polls questions um, location, temperature. You can attach all of these things to your posts. Like people use it a lot to say, look where I'm at. I'm in Hawaii again. And then here's uh, hashtag Hawaii or whatever. So, um, so can you you can can you add to a story? Only to your own stories. Right. So, sorry. The example is I'll be at the dog surfing thing Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking pictures of dogs all day long. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is I'm posting, 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 posting all day long. So if I have a story, I can reopen that story and add a new picture and yeah. post the story. Yeah, you without keep having to come up with a new caption and a new funny thing to say. Or... Each slide will has the ability to have its own captions and such. So you would have to add the filter, the text, whatever to each uh, each post, each slide. It's not like all of them have it at once. So you add a slide to so the from story. From the standpoint of the user okay. posting, it wouldn't necessarily be any different than posting everything individually. Not, not too different than posting a regular type of post. It's just the difference of it is what can be added to it, the extra fun stuff, and that it disappears in 24 hours. And you can also see who's viewed your story. It gives you stats um, to see who has viewed and who has answered and all of that. 
So you add a slide to the story every time um, they disappear chronologically. So you always have a story. It's probably empty unless you're active with it. So right now, I'm going to put something into my story. An hour later, I'm going to put something else into my story. Well, the one from an hour ago will disappear in 23 hours. The one from right now will disappear in 24 hours. Then let's say in 12 hours, I add another, another uh, slide to the story, another content to the story. Well, the one I posted first is 12 hours until that goes away. The other one is 13 hours until it goes away. The one I just posted is 24 hours until it goes away. So you can keep the story Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's that the individual slides will go away. Because I'm that interesting. Yes, of course. <laughs> I believe it. You are that interesting. <laughs> so they disappear chronologically. I think we saw it right here when we looked at, at yeah, Eric's. <laughs> yeah, look at that. We're just about to hit his 24-hour mark, and I just hit the one where he was on the treadmill just right now. So it's no longer there. So that one just hit 24 hours. This one, since he probably posted it on that exact Does same he own moment. Stock and What's that? Does he have stock at protein No. Well, maybe. <laughs> Oftentimes, uh, people will sort of, if they're doing social media for real, they will often mention that it is a it is an advertisement or a paid promotional thing. He didn't mention it, so it's probably. Okay. He just loves that one. So this is probably going to disappear right after our break. But yeah, there it is. It's 24 hours. This one was done 24 hours ago, one day ago. And this one will probably happen in just a few minutes because he got off the treadmill, he took the photo, and put it in the story. But um, usage for business is that exclusive offers for followers exclusive content for followers you might put on your evergreen photos pictures of your content or 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 whatever but in your in your story is where you're gonna put the coupons or the limited sales the flash sales and such and so that's gonna give the incentive to people that I've got to follow this account and I've got to keep up with their story and if my business is interesting enough that I'm going to share something every day, I've got to check in on them on Instagram every day. So within my regular static posts, I could be mentioning to pay attention to my stories. In here, I could have a quick little video that says, OK, everyone, tomorrow we're going to have an exclusive story. Don't forget to come back. And then I add it to the story, and it's going to be there 24 hours and then it's gone. I'm not going to put that detail, that deal permanently here because I don't want someone to go back to a deal I put there a year ago and still try to claim it. So stories are, are a way for that to keep people coming back. It keeps people coming back. To keep up to date with you plays into FOMO. Do you know what FOMO means? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. I don't want to miss out on this thing. I got to keep coming back. Well, these networks were already sort of like short attention span theaters. And then now, 24 hours before this goes away, it's even more. And. Uh, Snapchat has this. They pioneered it first. Uh, Instagram uh, borrowed it. Um, Twitter has a version of it called Moments, which hasn't really took, taken off at all. But they've got a version of it, actually older than the Instagram one, but not as old as the Snapchat one. I didn't even mention it when we talked about Twitter, because I don't really think they're that relevant on Twitter. But it could be if you, on your particular business, perhaps. use for business. Use the question or poll feature to interact with your followers. There is, I don't think I can show it here, but there is the ability to add 
So if I'm going to upload this photo, um, so I have this, I can draw on it, okay. So I can do that drawing stuff. I looks like I can do text. I can download it. Uh, okay, I guess it does download even on the computer. Okay, I downloaded it to my computer. Now it's in my computer. And uh, then I then I add it to the story. Uh, there are other abilities such as uh, stickers that are on the real phone. There'd be an extra icon right here, and in that icon, there's the ability to add polls or, or questions. Uh, I could show off a photo of two cookies, and I can say, "Which is your favorite cookie?" And then have the option of chocolate chip versus walnut, and then people could interact with that. And then I will see statistics on my on my account here about how many people saw that, how many people replied, which one got most of the votes. There's another sticker that I can add that is a question that I could put a prompt and say, what's your favorite um, type of cake? So then people themselves could answer what they, what they want their answer to be. And the point of that is, again, this community building stuff. It's not always about going to be selling the it's not always going to be about selling what your what your products are. It's going to be simply trying to build community, ask questions, uh, have people interact with you, and and be social on a social network. So now that guy added to my story. It's got the little it's got the little uh, halo around that you got to watch it before it goes away. You don't you don't want to miss out. So let's, uh, let's take our next break. If you want to go see that story yourself, the account on this one is the, the V-M-C-I-N-K. Uh, so we'll take a break. It's 11.42. We'll be back at 11.52, and we'll start to cover some Snapchat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll be there one moment.